Labyrinth City was recently released for the Nintendo Switch, an easygoing indie game that takes the player through colorful and varied environments. In this review, I find out if the game holds up, if it is worth buying. Please subscribe to my channel so you will be notified when new reviews or other content comes. Labyrinth City Pierre the Maze Detective is a 2D game developed by the gaming company Darjeeling. Maybe you're familiar with the books about Pierre the Maze Detective, but now it is time for the game version. The game is about guiding Pierre through different labyrinths to capture the evil Mr. X. Mr. X has stolen the Maze Stone from the museum, and it will be Pierre's task to catch him and take it back. To help him, Mr. X has a large gang of bandits who will make life miserable for you. Or rather, that the bandits are blocking roads, which makes it difficult for Pierre to orient himself in the game. The game initially has a low level of difficulty, but the further you get, the more complex the labyrinths become. Along the paths, there are purple arrows that mark the correct path. In the beginning, it is easy to find a way because the course is well marked with arrows. But it will be challenging after a while, as you can choose on more paths and it is not clear which path is the right one. The graphics and details contribute to the difficulty of the game as the game developers have created environments that are crowded with characters, objects and debris. It is somewhat reminiscent of Where's Waldo, where thousands of objects constitute the difficulty in finding Waldo. But instead of finding and clicking on a figure, it's about navigating through a maze of objects until you reach the final destination. The question is whether the idea behind the game is exciting and entertaining. Whether it is to the game's advantage to navigate for labyrinths until you reach the goal. To be honest, it usually feels frustrating not to find the right path and the game idea of going through labyrinths with closed roads is very simple and not very interesting in the long run. Possibly the idea is to explore every corner to finally reach the goal, but you do not have to think or make a lot of effort to get ahead in the game. And when a game makes you not have to think, is that a good game? I don't think so. You can also compare with Super Mario. It is of course quite possible to run through Super Mario Brothers, but it is important to be alert to all things that can make life difficult for one. Goombas, Koopa Troopas, giant holes and so on. In Labyrinth City there are basically no difficult obstacles, apart from a few bandits and debris lying in the way. Just find the right path and you win. I find it a little too simple and not very entertaining. And that's because there's no tension, like watching a movie without action or where nothing happens. The graphics are simply amazing, especially for being an indie game. Just look at the details, colors and contours. Nothing has been neglected, but everything you see in the game is a nice cartoonish graphic feel. And that's probably the big deal with the game, the graphics. The enormous wealth of characters, buildings, objects and roads can be among the most graphically interesting I have seen in a game released for Nintendo Switch. The game developer has certainly not been lazy when it comes to creating a colorful and varied world. The game is short. If you have only played the main story, it should be possible to complete the game in 4 hours or less. If you plan to find all the stars, chests and clues, it will probably take a few more hours, but it is possible to finish the game in one night. After completing the main story, you can go back and play courses and complete what you are missing, but this is only if you want to complete the game 100%, otherwise the replayability is quite low. After the main story is finished, you feel finished with the game and move on to something else. But if you want to continue exploring, there is the possibility to do so. In the game there are a couple of different puzzles. 
Now let me put it this way, they are extremely easy. Almost embarrassingly easy. I never had to think for more than a couple of seconds or redo them before they were done. Here I think the game developer could have put a little bit more time and energy, increased the tension and variation considerably by constructing a few more challenging puzzles. Maybe the puzzles are aimed at children, but the fact is that I did not read any information that the game would be aimed only at children, rather it should be a family game. As I said before, Labyrinth City is a short game, only 10 stages long. Sometimes it is a little nice to listen to what different characters have to say. It is noticeable that the game developer has humor. In addition, the graphics are very nice, and they have chosen to create a world that fits well with how the game is played. Unfortunately, the game is quite monotonous, and the game idea is sometimes boring and not very interesting. It is not very fun to just look for the right path all the time, but basically, it's the only thing the game is about. Sure, there are some surrounding aspects that can contribute to there being a little more to do, but it is completely voluntary and has a minimal impact on the game. Maybe Labyrinth City can be a family game that most people can have fun with, but I would rather say that this is aimed at children. And in the eShop the game costs 12 bucks, which feels like a reasonable price. If you want an easy and good looking game, then this may be something for you. Have fun.